without ceremony Monster Hearts 2 system and is entirely improvised outside of backstory prepared for the start of the game. This game will contain description of violence, blood, sexual themes, alcohol, and gambling. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey guys! Since this is our first session, we'll introduce our characters before getting right into the episode. We'll start off with the player characters. Um, hey, what's up? Um, Katya, my Twitter handle is yeeha underscore whale, and I play uh, Dante Ortega. Uh, they're 26, and their pronouns are they, them. Mine are she, her. Uh, Dante's skin is called the custodian, and um, and they're tired. Yes, they are really tired. Uh, <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Bibi. My pronouns are she, her. I go by Bibinello94 on Twitter, and I play Nox Tanith. Uh, he is 26, and his pronouns are he, they. Uh, they are a Gorgon, and they are a very chaotic member of the choir, so watch out. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anel. Um, I go by Zephyr Zeon on Twitter. Um, I play Tal and Meza, or uh, they go by Tal. Um, Tal is 25. Uh, their pronouns are she, they. Uh, they're a fire starter, and one fun fact about Tal is that they do tattoos. Hi, I'm Zoe. I go by Zoe. Um, my Twitter is at Zoe Marson. Um, and I play Morgan Rogers. Um, they are 23, I think, and their pronouns are she, they. Um, and my pronouns are she, they. Um, and they are the play thing. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> it was perfect. Hi there, I'm Jules. I use she, her pronouns. I go by Shaky Jules on Twitter and I play Micah Jesse Evans. They're 23 and their pronouns are they, them. Micah Skin is the Reaper and they're a member of the Coven. Ooh, spooky. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Hi, I'm Leslie. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. You can find me on Twitter by Leslie underscore O or most social media by Leslie O. I play Ash Murphy. They use she, they pronouns. They are 23. And her skin is the hunted, which means someone or something is after them. That's it. Okay, so now... Um... Our lovely GM can go next. Hi, I'm Fern. I go by Fernella on Twitter, and I'm the GM for this campaign. So I play uh, any relevant non-playable characters, and uh, of those, there are five that are important. Um, the first two that are the central ones are Haley Marshall and uh, Taya T. Um, Haley is uh, 25. And her pronouns are she, they. Uh, Taya is 28, and their pronouns are they, them. Taya is the Oni skin, and Haley is the succubus. And the two of them are the respected leaders of warring factions, uh, the cult for Taya, and then uh, the coven for Haley. Other characters that I play uh, include uh, Vera Han. Um, her pronouns are she, her, and she's 22. She is a human, um, and she runs the curiosity shop in the town, so, uh, she's always there to help out. Um, and I also play Chrissy Carter, um, the 27-year-old owner of the Altar Hotel, where most of the story takes place, um, her pronouns are she, her, and she's a vampire. Um, and then, uh, lastly, I play, uh, Dante Ortega's familiar, uh, Camino. Um, she's a hellhound Cerberus, um, who is six feet tall, uh, ageless, and, um, kind of a mess. So, uh, yeah. That 
Perfect. You play lots of characters, huh? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> well, we hope that you will like this first episode of the campaign. And hopefully we'll just keep improving. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Everybody, you can say something if you want <laughs> before we leave. <laughs> we love you guys. Thank you yeah, for listening. What's that called? go eat a horseshoe go go eat a fucking horseshoe (laughs) and we are live (laughs) woo We're back. Yay. Hello. Welcome Hi, everybody. Guys. We are back Ugh. with the second campaign Ooh. for our little troop. Super exciting. Just a couple housekeeping things. This campaign is set in a version of Flagstaff, Arizona in a small town called Javelin. Javelin is run by a scrupulous and religious organization called The Choir. They have had a firm grip over the town for the last 20 odd years and for the most part they play an integral role in keeping the town's functions up and running but at the same time it isn't really that enjoyable to be under the thumb of what at times feels like a mafia. Skirting along the rim of Javelin and occasionally dipping their fingers into the pie when they get a chance is a group of unlikely outlaws. They have been known to cause problems for the town, to sometimes pick off unsuspecting and unlucky members of the cult. As everyone has learned over time, their identities remain relatively obscured. Where we set our scene, the taste of dust settles on your tongue. It's a dry heat outside. The smell of whiskey and cigarette smoke filters out of the altar, a wholly neutral round hotel frequented by pilgrims of the Javelin Prefecture. The bar is lively. Members of the reverent cult family, the choir, pace through the lounge and hover by the bar. Travelers to the town are leery of them, but cannot help their morbid fascination at how they seem to run everything about this area. Dotted between the religious zealots are renegades who have a penchant for causing trouble, mysterious individuals with their own goals who can't help but meddle in the business of this strange and domineering faction. Sitting at the bar, avoiding the prying gaze of strangers, is one of these outlaws, Ash Murphy. Ash, why don't you give us a little introduction? What do you look like right now? What are you doing? Oh, God. Hi. Mm. (laughs) Ash is just, like, sitting at the bar. They have a cap on that says bad guy on it. Probably, like, a black shirt, light jeans. They have visible jellyfish tattoo on the right arm. And they also wearing a leather bracelet on the right arm. Ash, as you sit at the bar, you notice the bartender walk past you and gesture to a bottle of tequila that they're holding to see if you're interested in a shot. Do you want to take one? She actually uh, just raises the current empty cup that they have on the table for them to fill. You've been sitting at the bar now for a small while, and you notice a familiar face cross your path and stand against the bar with her back to the bar. It's the sort of unruly leader of your little strange group of not necessarily friends, co-workers almost. Do you want to talk to her? She seems like she's surveying the bar. How far away are they? They seem to be sort of leaning their elbows against the bar close to you, maybe a seat and a half away. She's not looking at you, but you probably know why she's there. Ash doesn't like motion to look at her and like acknowledge their presence. They just whisper loud enough like for them to hear and ask, um, do you have eyes on them? I haven't managed to figure out who it is yet, no. Oh, okay. I've been waiting for a while. 
<laughs> I see you've gotten yourself a drink. Mm, just a way to pass the time. I don't think they've noticed you yet, but I think you have some company to your three o'clock. Ash, when you look over, there's a figure in a sort of tawny suede jacket with a black hat. They haven't noticed you. Haley is right. Tal, are you sipping on a drink? Are you deep in thought? What are you doing right now? Yes, Tal is also at the bar. And they're sipping on an iced whiskey. And it's like almost empty. And they're just swirling the ice at the bottom of the glass and looking at it and contemplating like why they're there today and what they have to do. And yeah, Tal is wearing a wide brim like Panama hat. It's black. It's got like a thin leather wrap around the base of where she puts her hat. Got a tan jacket on, it's worn but well kept underneath. They're wearing a black tank top, and you can see their Zia Sun tattoo on their neck with parts of their tattoo on their chest showing. They're wearing some work pants with leather-like lining on the inner thighs, and they're wearing work boots as well with spurs at the end. <laughs> but yeah, that's what they're wearing. <laughs> First of all, hi, Tal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Ash, you make note of this. You recognize this person. What is your first instinct? Her first instinct is just to turn, like, complete opposite of the way that Tal is. And she kind of whispers to herself, fuck me, and drinks the whole shot. You okay, kid? Yeah. As long as you keep your end of the deal. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go back on it. Listen, do you want to take your chances here? Or do you want to try and slide away? I could maybe offer a diversion. Maybe I'll break a glass over there. Yeah, I'll just, I'll keep an eye outside. So Haley, who is wearing a sort of brown cowboy hat and a striped pale grayish blue shirt with a gray shirt underneath tips her hat at you and walks over you can hear the clink of her metal spurs as she walks the other direction so ash are you going to try to make a break for it outside yeah as soon as like she sees that Haley moved they try to be discreet and move away without getting much attention to themselves all right so now i think it would be a good chance but to try out the new mechanic that we've set up for this game where mm. we've incorporated a new role which is going to be chance so when you try to take a risky decision you're going to have to roll with your gambling modifier to see if your gamble ends up paying off so why don't you roll for a chance to see if you get away smoothly it's not that it's gonna roll bad <laughs> 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 I believe in you. <laughs> no. The snakes. Oh, but you rolled it in MHU. Oh. oh. It, it, I mean, yeah, this it is no, it doesn't matter. Like, try again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> A second chance. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Oh, the first, what? It's the first session. What? 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 Oh, oh no. wait. You're on 2D26. 2D26. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> wait, that's not possible. That's it, yes. Uh, it's, it's bait. <laughs> it's a lot of six. <laughs> All right. When you fail a chance roll, what happens is that whatever you were trying to accomplish, whatever sort of gamble you were putting on the table, it was a bluff. So you lose the thing you are trying to do, which is get away silently. 
So as you hop off the bar stool, uh, you get caught on your own feet. You're so stressed about the situation. This is exactly not the person you wanted to see. And you trip and fall over and you land on the ground. It's enough to make a couple heads turn your way. And Tal, you also hear this sound. As you turn, Tal, you notice that there is a person standing in front of you, semi-obscuring this figure that has fallen. You think you've seen her before, maybe on a wanted poster, but it seems blurry. And she's trying to hold your gaze so that you don't look at the person who's on the ground. What do you do? Oh my god. At, at hearing that noise, Tal immediately swivels their head back and is looking at the scene and then sees that flash of pink hair and there's this burning sensation at the base of her throat and she immediately like puts the glass they were holding down and then gets up from the bar stool and is looking at the uh, the person that's obscuring Ash. Does it look kind like of Tal is about to move forward? Yes, they move forward. Okay. Haley is going to roll for a chance. Okay. Mm-hmm. Can okay. you stay here? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think it'll work entirely. <laughs> so, Haley, holding her drink, tries to pretend to be a bit of a ditz. She stumbles forward and she spills her whiskey down the front of Tal's shirt. <laughs> she immediately sort of stutters and tries, like, patting them dry, giving them this sort of big, doe-eyed performance about how she's so sorry. Oh my goodness, that was quite the introduction. I'm so sorry. Are you all right? Oh, uh, Tal has this look of, wow, what an inconvenience that just happened right now, but has a polite smile on their face and then goes... Don't worry, miss. It's all right. And then is backing up a little bit because they're like in their space. And meanwhile, as Ash fell, they do just like fuck, fuck, fuck. And then quickly <laughs> try to get up and move away faster this time. You just... want to roll <gasps> volatile to run away? Yeah. Tal is going to do the move hot in here. Oh, okay. And is going to try and lash out physically on Ash. <laughs> who's trying to get away. What the heck? <laughs> oh, okay. And should I describe what the move is? Okay, so hot in here oh, nice. is you have a way of lowering other people's inhibitions. After you turn someone on or lash out physically, everyone there, including you, adds plus one to further roles to turn someone on or lash out physically until you leave. I will say, at this moment, you are not close enough to uh. reach Ash physically, so you will have to push past Haley and get to uh, Ash. So I think okay. I would, I will give Ash the opportunity to roll Volatile to get away, and I then you can chase after her. And I gotcha. rolled a six. Again. Oh, you rolled a six? No. <laughs> oh my <laughs> she god. Was <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay. Uh. All right. Tal, if it's okay, uh, I want to briefly go to the second person who will be course. descending the staircase to come upon this scene. Micah, you have just come down from the upper story balcony, and you look good. What are you wearing? What do you look like? <laughs> I'm sorry. Micah is wearing a black cowboy hat. They have cyan. I'm not sure if that's how you can say it. Cyan hair, cyan colored hair. They're wearing a black dress shirt with their sleeves rolled up. They have these light suspenders and they're wearing dark pants with these lines on top of them. And they're smoking, which we will see if that's allowed inside or not, but it is. It's the 90s, it's allowed. (laughs) Yeah, all right, yeah. (laughs) And uh, yeah. All right, Micah, you're walking down the stairs. And you notice that Haley, who is dwarfed by this imposing figure that you probably haven't seen around very much, is standing protectively in front of a downed Ash, who is scrambling to get to her feet and failing. She seems legitimately terrified. How do you want to approach this scene? 
So the, the situation seems more tense and dangerous than just like a mere accident as if Ash just stumbled and it's just a silly coincidence. It doesn't really... Are you asking if it seems harmless? Yeah, does it seem harmless to Micah or do they see that it's like, like a tense situation? It seems to be an active situation. Like, Ash is literally failing to get to her feet and like stumbling. It seems serious. Alright, Micah's gonna jog down the stairs and approach Ash and be like, Hi there, <laughs> you alright? And offer a hand to help her up. Yeah, Ashley. Ashley? Ash. Ashley. <laughs> Ash immediately just, just just takes the hand and like she does not dare to look back just yet. She's just mm -hmm. nervous trying to get up and get out. May I ask the cheeky question if Ash is like squeezing the hand to signal to Micah? Y you can see that they look frightened. Okay. Sorry, miss, you wanted to say something. Yeah, at this moment, Tal, like, I would say that as you want to sort of push past Haley, this is when you see Micah walk over and help Ash up. You've never seen Micah before. So now, what do you want to do? Tal is fairly observant, and although they have their chance, to try and get this person they've been looking for, but sees that Micah, who looks damn good, is picking up Ash, and there's this other lady who's just patting them down. It might not be the time. She's gonna try and de-escalate a little bit and just take in like who they saw just walk down the stairs and keep notes on how they look like, and then back away and takes off their jacket to like dry themselves off and then holds it and actually uh, grits their jaw <laughs> a little bit <laughs> and then nods to Haley I think she's thinking a lot right now and slowly starts to turn away. How is Haley looking at Tal right now? You can't really read Haley's expression. She has a sort of like mystique where it really could be anything. In some ways it looks like she's sizing Tal up but in other ways, it almost seems like they're checking them out. It's unclear, but she's definitely just looking at you. Uh, okay. Tal is going to hold Haley's gaze, and Haley might see a glint. Like, Tal has, like, dark eyes, almost obsidian, and then something like a spark lighting in the dark. She sees just a little bit of it because she was, like, an obstacle in just what happened, and it was... Just, yeah, okay, maybe here's not the place. Um, then nods at Haley again and says, excuse me, miss, and then turns around. Um, where was Taya again? Taya is in their office, in the their penthouse. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So, so way up, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. you could take the elevator. Tal is actually the only one with the key to the specific floor in the penthouse. So you could theoretically go there. Or you could try to find any place to go. Yeah, I think uh, Tal is going to try and like maybe head up towards like Taya to give them an update. If, mm. if possible. Okay. So as Tal walks away, you can feel eyes boring down into the back of your head. Did you want to look back at all? Are you asking Ash? Oh, I'm asking Tal. Like as um... Tal is walking away. Yeah, Tal is going to look back, but specifically at Ash. Ash, you have been helped to your feet by Micah. Have you had any interest in looking back towards Tal, or are you already looking for an exit? They're trying to get out. They don't even say thank you to, to Micah. They just say, I, I gotta be outside and try to move, like, fast. And can I ask you, you have two sort of pathways the pathway to the main doors in the lobby, or you can try to sneak out through the side door, which leads to the side of the hotel towards the canyon. They'll go to the path less taken. Mm, okay, I think you can go to the side door towards the canyon. Okay. Okay, Micah, do you follow? No, 
But Micah will ask, just before Ash runs off, do you need anything? Ash doesn't reply. <laughs> they, they just <laughs> go away. <laughs> In that case, Micah will turn to Ailey and go, All right, uh, what was that? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Morgan should be back at the bar soon. We can finish what we started when we came here, okay? All right. <laughs> so now... I want to take a walk outside where it's a particularly cool evening. The sun is just beginning to go down and there's sort of like a grayish light that's sort of blooming all over the desert. Knox, you are standing on the porch, this little archway that leads towards the lobby and beside you is Dante. Dante, have you taken a seat on one of the benches? Are you also standing towards the stairs? Where are you? I think Dante would be leaning somewhere with their back. If there's a wall or a column or something like that. Okay. And Nox, why don't you describe what you look like in this moment? Sure. Nox is wearing a very baggy shirt and also black sunglasses and baggy shorts like the whole look is just a tall person with very baggy <laughs> clothes <laughs> they have tattoos a bit around everywhere and um, the tats you can see them from the neck he has two long sleeves of tats in uh, his legs he has one knee pad on uh, his left leg and uh, Nox is just mostly like hanging around with his hands in his pockets. He's eyeing his skateboard, which is standing near the wall and wondering if he should just just do some tricks or like do something to entertain himself because he's pretty bored right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dante, wherever you're leaning, behind you in one of the rocking chairs is this tall and honestly just feral looking creature who's using a long nail to pick something out of her teeth. She's got her legs crossed over each other and she's wearing a black leather jacket and her hair is completely unruly. The three of you have been waiting outside for a little bit. You were told there was going to be some sort of emissary coming with some kind of information. You don't know if it's already made it into the hotel, but you sort of thought maybe we could wait it out out here. But there hasn't really been any movement. Did you want to say anything to Knox? No, Dante's just leaning against whatever it is and smoking a cigarette, not paying attention to neither of them. Basically, from what I'm understanding, Knox is ahead of Dante. Where are they exactly in everybody's position, we can ask? Dante, you're leaning against one of the beams, right? By the entrance? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and um, where is Cam? Cam is towards the window of the actual hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a rock chair and she's reclined in that. Okay, I think that, uh, that Nox was a bit ahead of like the stars just in the beginning of the street. And at some point, Nox seems like fidgety with his hands in his pockets. Gives a big sigh and looks back at the both of them. And uh, he goes like, dude, so fucking bored. How long are we going to have to wait here, them? Yeah, this sucks. Ugh. You can do a trick and entertain us. Oh, you like that, wouldn't you? Sure, <laughs> Nothing's happening out here. Ugh. God. Nox looks back at the street, trying to see if anything is happening. Any, like something. Anything. Is that um, anything? You hear the distinct metal latch click of the side door, which usually you only hear for deliveries. It's probably about 10 meters away from you. Oh. Nox... He suddenly looks towards that direction and starts to head there. <laughs> Where are you going exactly? Just a minute. No, I want to come. 
Sure, come with me. Where are you guys going? We have to wait here. You can wait Ooh. there. Don't worry. We'll be back soon. Don't worry. We'll collect our stick in the mud when we're back. <laughs> okay, so Nox, you can walk. Cam is trailing behind you. And Ash, you have made a break for it. Directly in front of you is the canyon rim. Maybe you take a moment to catch your breath. The That's horses. We do. Yeah. The horses yeah. are hitched in front I, of I also the want to say that like, they take just one look behind as she reaches the door outside just to make sure Tao isn't following. And mm. then like when she gets outside, she's taking a breath. Okay. I'm going to say that the sort of like crooked laughter of Cam echoes around the desert. The desert is so silent, you're able to hear a pin drop. So you can hear them approaching. There's footsteps. What do you want to do? Is there anything around? It seems like you could travel along the rim to make it to the back of the hotel. Maybe find a way in through the lounge. If you were to keep going, you'd have to pass behind the county jail and circle back the long way around to try to collect the horses or wait for your team. Uh, what do you want to do? God, I hear footsteps approaching, right? Yes. Can I ask something to the abyss? Yeah, you can. Um, abyss, roll. Okay. <laughs> With my luck. <laughs> <laughs> this is just one that roll. So now I get it. Oh god. <laughs> what did you Oh actually I think you have a move for that, don't you? Yes. I get to ask a second question. Yes. The move uh the dark is coming. When you roll high, you get to ask the abyss one question about someone following or hunting you. The original question was, is it safe to stay here outside right now? I think that's subjective because Knox has never seen your face before and neither has Cam. So there's nothing to suggest that them arriving would result in any kind of immediate capture or danger. But at the same time, it's a gamble. It's up to how you react to the situation, I would imagine. Okay. So I feel like Ash would just want to get away from everyone right now. So they would go around and just try to hide before they see them. Oh, try to hide? Yeah. Okay. You got to roll for chance. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ash. Someone Ash <laughs> just falling again. <laughs> like, come and not just I see this lady falling. <laughs> this poor desert punk is just not having their day. <laughs> oh, okay, it's good. Oh, awesome. Okay, so on a 10 and up, that's a complete success for a chance roll. Behind the door, there's a collection of low desert scrub. It's incredibly thick, and walking through will probably leave you with a couple scrapes. It'll obscure you. There are these little red flowers that might even take the focus away from your pink hair. So you walk behind and wait for the others to approach, right? Yeah, she's just hiding... And for my second question is, wait, what's the move again? It's uh, you can ask a question about someone hunting or following you. So technically, these two people are following your sound. You could ask a question about them. I think it's more suited towards the hunter. Yeah. Okay, so I'll ask, is Tao like following me right now? I didn't see her through the door, but I would want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, there. Tal is not in pursuit of you at this moment. Okay. Okay, Nox, you you're walking with Cam and Toe, and the door is closed. There's nothing around. There's the sort of faint breeze and sand blowing that you're all too accustomed to at this point, and you begin to wonder if the sound was maybe just your mind playing tricks on you. At this point, you've been waiting outside for at least two hours. There's been no sightings, no news. 
What do you want to do? Do you want to head inside or do you want to head back to Dante? So when Nox arrives at the door and sees nobody, first thing first, just if it looks like he's asking to the air, but it's obviously asking to come and just says to nobody. Have you heard a sound coming from here? I think so. <laughs> no, like before I started to walk here. I don't know. I'm bored. I'm not paying attention. <sighs> yeah. Why does T let us stay outside for two hours doing nothing with Dante? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not doing shit for them. I'm just here because I have to be. <laughs> yeah, I know. Whatever. Ugh. You know what? I'm gonna go inside because I don't want to be outside anymore. I'm bored and I'm just gonna go, okay? See ya. No, I have to go back. Yeah, tell Dante that I think they are dummy. <laughs> I'm sure that'll go over super well. Yeah, okay. Nox is already, <laughs> already gone. <laughs> just opened the door and just left. <laughs> I think that as Cam is walking back to Dante, as the door is closing, she's going to roll her eyes and mutter, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to come back to Dante, who is waiting outside. But now I want to head back to inside the bar where somebody has just come around the corner. Morgan, do you want to describe what you look like right now? Yeah, I can. So Morgan has a uh, long hair with like an ombre, like blonde dye that goes half up, half the way up. And it's pulled back in like a half bun and the sides are shaved. And she is wearing a dark gray, like denim Sherpa jacket, a gray shirt and high-waisted black jeans. And yeah. <laughs> All right. As you're sort of rounding the corner, you notice that Haley is back at the bar where you left her last time. She has her elbows propped up against it. And occasionally she reaches behind her and is sipping, at this point, a new drink. <laughs> and Micah, are you standing with her or have you gone on a little reconnaissance? Micah has just stayed there next to Haley at the bar, just gazing around at people in the room, chilling. Morgan, do you want to approach them or do you want to sort of walk past them? I think she'll approach them. All right. When you arrive at the bar, what do you say to the two of them? Do you want to talk to Micah? Do you want to talk to Haley? Do you want to order a drink? Yeah, I think she'll order a beer and she'll look over at Haley first and just say, Howdy, Marshall. <laughs> hey there, kid. Are you good? Yeah. Everything all right here? <sighs> No, everything is most certainly not all right. Ash took a little tumble and had to run outside, but I will tell you about that when we get back to the ranch. And I had a bit of a run-in with one of your favorites. Nice little choir member. <laughs> Where are they now? I'm kind of sad you missed it, actually. I feel like you would have had a lot of fun standing up to this one. Looks tough. You have to save it for later. <laughs> yeah, don't get ahead of yourself. I think they went to the elevator. I'm not sure where they were headed. You could try to tell them, but I really don't know. Do you want me to? We haven't found our man yet. We've been here for hours. Oh, God, I swear to God, their operation is a disaster. Would Morgan be able to follow Tal? So, I'd like to think that if you gaze into the abyss, you might be able to figure out where Tal is. That being said, you probably wouldn't be able to get up to the floor unless you did some hardcore finagling around the fire escapes of the altar. Yeah, why not? Alright, uh, real dark. Alright. 
Okay, my dark is plus one. Wait, it's 2d6, right? Yes. Okay. <gasps> How... Okay, we're not doing How... that. <laughs> I got Wait, two. I'm... It doesn't make sense, though. Yeah, no, it doesn't make sense, because usually it shows you what your results are. It says 6 plus 5, 3 plus yeah, 6. Yeah, you should roll again. Nine. Okay. Also put the, the space the put the space, put the space after the 6. Yeah. Oh, okay. <gasps> I am killing it. I'm killing it. No one's doing it like me. That's a four. Okay, so All scratch right. that plan. <laughs> okay, so a four is a failure. And basically what that means is when you try to think about it, the sort of spiritual energy of the altar seems to be messing with your intuition, your own chemical signals. So you're not really able to figure out where exactly they went. Definitely not unless you begin to ask around. But you are aware that as you've been inside this room, you haven't seen Taya once. Taya doesn't usually like to be on the ground for operations like this, but it does seem a little bit suspicious that all of the people you're seeing, the choir members, they seem like grunts, they seem like foot soldiers. You'd think there'd be like at least one who would be a challenge to you. So what do you feel like doing right now? I think Morgan will just stay with Haley and sip her beer at the bar. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to go back to Dante now. Dante, you are still sort of on the porch, and you look a little bit beaten up right now. Do you want to maybe describe for everybody, like, exactly what you look like, maybe where you've been? Sure. Um, Dante has actually just returned from jail for reasons unknown. And they are fashioning a nice little black eye because they also got into a fight while they were being held at the police station. And besides that, they are wearing a denim jacket, denim jeans with a ruggedy looking white shirt and a flannel shirt wrapped around their waist. And yeah, they also seem bored and disinterested. Hmm. You can see people starting to put on their lights as it gets even darker along the horizon. There's something charming about the way lights glow out in the desert, and it seems almost peaceful, even though you know that this is anything but a peaceful town. How does it make you feel to sort of look out and it's barren? There's no people walking on the streets. There's barely any sound. There's maybe the slight blur of a cicada in the distance. For some reason, they think about their home, actually. The lights remind them of little lights on boats that are floating on the surface of the ocean at the night. But they quickly scrap that thought away. The moment you think you might be having a peaceful thought, Cam rounds the corner as she looks displeased, uh, but she okay. sort of always does. And she stomps, boots up the stairs, and then slumps back into the rocking chair, looking really bored. Where's my stick, Cam? I wanted to play fetch. Uh, uh, do you want me to go inside? I came back back for you. Oh, it did. That's very unlike you. What, are you starting to care about me? Is that it? Ugh, disgusting. Also, <laughs> Nox isn't coming back. I kicked him into the canyon, so I hope you said goodbye. I have a feeling you're lying, but... And then Dante reaches into uh, their pocket and offers Cam a cigarette. Wanna smoke? Do you think that dogs can smoke? Is that Would you offer a dog a cigarette? Are you an ordinary dog? Just give me the fucking cigarette. She snatches it out of their hands. <laughs> awesome. Does she have a lighter um, or does Dante light it up for her? She just sort of waits and just lets it hang out of her mouth. Ah, okay. Yeah, and then Dante lights up the cigarette. <laughs> 
<laughs> she like breathes in the smoke and then takes the cigarette out and does like a fake bow in the rocking chair. Like, Thank you, my liege. And then starts smoking again. <laughs> Dante just chuckles and then goes back to their spot. So that brief moment of silence, you begin to hear something whipping in the distance, this sort of frantic, billowing sound of sand. And you recognize it almost instantly. There's wind, it's heavy, and there is a cloud of smoke that seems to start making its way just wafting into your area and you already know there's going to be a sandstorm. What do you want to do? This this is not looking good. I think I am gonna head inside. Cam doesn't really say anything. She just takes another smoke and then drops it on the ground and kind of stomps it out with her boot and she waits for you. Do you head inside? Yeah, Dante flicks away the cigarette butt and starts uh, walking towards the hotel entrance. All right. Ash, you've had a moment of respite. You perhaps were breathing in the thistle, (laughs) just (laughs) thinking about everything that was happening. And they were kind of whispering to themselves like, God, you got to put yourself together. (laughs) I love Ash. Gives a big sigh. (laughs) You begin to kind of hear the sort of violent wind that's whipping around. You're sheltered by the wall of the altar. The wind seems to be coming towards the canyon rather than from the canyon. What do you do? How how big is this place? Like, how big would, how long would it take to just go around? Go around from which direction? The jail or towards the lounge? The lounge. It wouldn't take you, like, too long, probably, like, two minutes to walk around the rim. Maybe one, if you ran. And were you saying something about horses before? Yeah, so the horses are hitched in front of the altar. There's a dedicated sort of stable. It's covered. Yeah, sandstorms are pretty common in the area. Okay, so they're not worried about Chief, then? And after they pull themselves together, they know that Tao isn't after them. So I think they just go back towards the way they came. Mm. Just get inside. All right. So Knox, you are walking in. It's a it's a bit earlier, and you notice that the whole altar area, like the foyer towards the bar and the lounge, they all seem to be pretty lively. And you're recognizing that there's a couple people standing by the bar that look really familiar. Specifically, there's a sort of like silhouetted figure with a cowboy hat that you've seen many times in the past. You probably haven't seen her in a few weeks, but definitely familiar. What do you do? As soon as Nox sees that figure, a big grinny smile comes to his face and just stomps, big stomps, like, towards the direction. And as soon as uh, (laughs) he's in the, like, reachable area, he goes, oh my god, look who's here, hi. (laughs) I think Haley prickles because she's standing right beside Morgan. Uh, like uh, uh, like uh, the first thing that Nox does like comes from the side where there is nobody and just puts one elbow to the counter and looks mm-hmm. down at Haley and doesn't notice Morgan in the beginning just looks at Haley and gr- greens and greets her and after doing that looks over <laughs> just raises his <laughs> glance and sees Morgan there and I'm gonna let you know Morgan looked very different when Knox knew her okay so So would uh, Knox uh, recognize Morgan Morgan looks pseudo familiar but not in the context that they knew okay okay yeah so like as soon as uh, Knox sees Morgan kind of continues saying 
You look familiar. Have we met before? I would remember them, right? Yeah, Morgan completely <laughs> remembers. <laughs> um, what's Haley's reaction to Knox so far? Haley's looking at Knox with sort of wide eyes, like her operation is a disaster. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think he's going to turn over and look at Morgan with a kind of knowing expression, almost that says, I'll handle this, but <laughs> you can't really tell completely. Okay, Morgan's gonna look back at Knox and say, Um, no, I, I don't think we have. Cool. I'm Nox. What's up? What's your business with Haley? What's your business with Haley? And he kind of laughs like he smiles <laughs> in a kind of weird, sort of creepy way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Haley's gonna back up off the bar and put two hands up like she's trying to quell these two people and be like this is not the way to make friends listen Knox this is the kid we've been together for a while now usually mm -hmm. when I make my visits I don't bring her with me she's often doing other things aren't you honey yeah doing kid stuff wait how, how old are you sorry kid oh I'm like 16 <laughs> yeah, sure, all right. Like, I I don't believe you, but all right. Do you have something to say to me, pretty boy? First of all, hi, ma'am. And Nox takes Haley's hand and gives it a kiss. So. Morgan jokes on her beer. <laughs> Can yeah. I just say that Micah's watching this and just <laughs> smoking and watching where this is going, kind of I confused I... and yeah. <laughs> After doing that, Nox says, j just looks at Haley and says, what are you doing in town? Um, and she's gonna look at Morgan and Micah to try to give them a kind of, I'm about to play the biggest con you've ever seen. <laughs> and then <laughs> looks back at Nox and is like, oh, baby, I'm here to see you. What do you think? I come into town for anything else? First of all, we know that's a lie, but I'm glad that you can just say that to my face. But we can just, yeah, sure, you're visiting me, sure, okay. And just does some air quotes. Well, are you busy now? Or are you waiting for something? Are you waiting for somebody? Why do you have a suggestion? Oh, I always have a suggestion for you. And Haley can't really see it, or kind of can, but like Nox gives a creepy little s smile and a wink. <laughs> Dax, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> <So much>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Haley's kind of amused. She can't help it. <laughs> this was not going according to plan at all. But it's funny. Out of the corner of her eye, she notices that Ash has re-entered the building. She's straying a little bit in the shadows towards the side entrance, but Ash, you and Haley make eye contact over Knox's shoulder. And Haley looks back at Knox and says, listen, if you let me just finish up my business with my good friends here, I will get us both a drink and I can meet you in the lounge in 20 minutes. How's that? Knox fakes thinking hard about it. And looks back at Morgan, actually. And for a moment, uh, that seems too long for comfort. So, like, uh, Nox is staring at Morgan. And it's kind of like thinking, but also not really. It's just weird enough putting. And then says, all right, I'll be around. And then just waves. Does Nox pass Haley on, like, the shoulder as yes. he's leaving? Um, I think she'll sort of, like, reach her hand out and brush the inside of their arm. <laughs> and Nox looks back for a second and gives a little smile. Okay, so, Dante, you have entered from the sandstorm with Cam. Ash, you have just made it around the corner. You're approaching the bar. And now I'm going to head up to the penthouse to finally check in with 
Taya and Tao. So Tao, mm -hmm. what just happened was pretty insane. Um, yeah. And uh, you just made it up the elevator. It has one of those chain link gates. So the door is open and then you have to pull the gate across. The top floor is basically just a giant circular room with one door across from the elevator. It's a vacant, uh, empty sort of space. What do you do? The elevator hasn't gone yet, right? Like, Tal had just reached the elevator? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This hotel doesn't happen to have intercoms to, like, levels or floors, do they? I know it's an older, it's like an older hotel, but I'm not sure what upgrades we have. No, yeah, <laughs> okay. there's definitely an intercom towards the electrical breakers that are by the staircase, mm -hmm. close to the elevator. And if you put in your keys, you should be able to, like, hit the button and talk to Taya. Okay. Yeah, because Tal would go to the top, but they've got to keep eyes on the floor. So Tal is going to put in the key and try to intercom T. All right. Uh, you hear the receiver click on the other end. Taya is listening, but they don't say anything at first. What do you say? Tal is kind of nervous, but tries to like swallow it down, um, only because of like recent events with T and it just didn't want to cause any problems for them. Um, and goes, we got some company downstairs. She's here. On the other end of the receiver, there's more silence. And with the way that T, uh, you know that they're waiting for you to continue. That explanation is not complete. And it seems like they've got company with them. I'm not quite sure who they are and then remembers what Micah looks like and then does a short bulleted explanation of what they look like and as well as Haley just reporting in basically does T say anything or does Tal hear anything you hear like a very faint shuffle and then T says hmm has anything changed with the dossier no, no one's arrived yet, except for them. Hmm. The sandstorm will delay it. I think that you should wait by the door. The people you've described just seem like a nuisance, but she won't be able to escape with the sandstorm outside. Tal just takes in a breath from the other line and then says, I'm on a tea. And then just waits if they say anything, but then if they don't, Tal's going to take the key out. You hear, like, a long pause, but eventually T says, Thank you, Tal. I'll see you once you've collected the document. And then Tal takes the key out. So, right now, in order to access the elevator, you do have to climb a small flight of stairs. At least the elevator that leads directly to the penthouse. So you're on the second floor balcony. There are no rooms on this floor. There's sort of some couches, some chairs. It's a wide open gathering space that looks down from one side onto the lounge, from the other side onto the bar and lobby area. And you notice there is a girl perched over the balcony, kind of watching things unfold. She seems fascinated with it all. And you recognize her. It's the shop owner. She's watching the scene. She's not drinking anything. She's just engrossed in what's happening. Um, <laughs> do you want to approach her or do you want to head back downstairs and finish your mission? No. As much as Tal is going to want to talk to Vera and check out what she's looking at, Tal's on the mission first. So she's going to check out if the person they're waiting for is going to be approaching and keep watch outside of the door that Taya mentioned. I love Tao. So you begin to head down the stairs and you'll have a clear line of sight at the bar and you'll notice Nox is just walking past you. Nox, do you think you notice Tao on the stairs? Uh, depends. Are there many people around? Not on the stairs. It's sort of like the lounge opens up into this big fan shape, and the stairs are on the left side of that. So if you're walking towards, um, Tao would be on your left. 
Yeah. Uh, yes, Nox not is this tall. Hey. And and kind of um, like a deviates from going whatever <laughs> Nox was going to just going to the left. What's up? Tal is like putting. Okay, I'm making the I'm making the the jacket suede. I think that's such a better idea. <laughs> It went from leather to suede to leather to suede, but um, <laughs> it changed, it changed, it changed it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know the textures weren't loading in, um, so <laughs> yeah. So oh, Cyber, cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So at this point, like the drink that had spilled on Tal's shirt, like their tank top is already dried. They kind of yeah. have a higher body temperature than normal. So it's probably already dried out. They put their jacket back on and then takes their hat off this time and kind of slicks it back. Is it noticeable though? Like, is that a stain or something? Like, uh, the... it's a black. It's a black tank top. Yeah, so, so it wouldn't. It very much. You might notice. I, I don't know. Depending on the drink, you might notice a smell, but I'm not sure how much was spilled. But... I don't think that like Nox would bother about smelling like a drink in a bar. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, hey, Nox. What are you talking to? What were you doing, like, at the elevator? Were you talking to? Yeah, um, I was just giving them an update. Um, mm. Anything it's, it's... happening? Because, like, I waited outside for more than two hours and I'm so done already. Mm. Uh, Tal kind of hums at Nox's behavior because it's very, it's very common of him to like, I feel like, <laughs> complain about waiting. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, and then Tal's like, yeah, you know, uh, you're not the only one who's like waiting. I know, but I'm the only one who complains apparently because uh, nobody wants to talk about it. God. Well, there's a reason for that. Yeah, okay. whatever. Okay, sorry. I, was hey. I in your way? Like, were you, sorry, I didn't want to just no. stop you. No, uh, no, you're not. The delivery person hasn't come yet. Have they? Not that I know. Like, I literally thought that I heard a noise from where they usually come, but there was nobody there. Yeah. Yeah, T just told us to keep an eye out. Um, the course. sandstorm's kind of pulling up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. But, uh... All right. Let's... And it's just another night. But then in Tal's mind, is thinking about the encounter with Ash. And I don't know if Nox might notice, but, like, Tal is kind of... Like, their eyes are less focused than usual. They're drifting off past Nox, not really looking at Nox. Would the Nox notice that? Yeah, the, I mean, um, the, I, I think they would. The I, but I'm not sure how perceptive. I think I the mean, Nox can be percep perceptive about these things, but usually doesn't say anything. But... Maybe with mm -hmm. Tal it would be a bit different. So if Nox notice the Tal is a bit different. I think Nox would say Okay, so you seem very stressed out, like from that and just <laughs> points at the whole of Tal. <laughs> so <laughs> why don't we just grab a drink together or hang out together? Please I prefer to hang out with you than Dante, I swear. Please. <laughs> you don't have to be so mean to Dante. Come on. Like, I'm cool. so... Yeah, cool. I'm uh... spent two hours outside with Dante. Please. <laughs> no, that's, uh... there's nothing cool about that, okay? I mean, it's like relaxing with a dog on the porch. <laughs> I think it's fine. I mean, if I um... have to relax... Uh... And um Tal Um Tal playfully and firmly lays their hand on Nox's shoulder and starts turning towards the bar and says yeah, a drink sounds like a great idea. Um, I think it's better than having it spilled on me. Um, oh, for and sure. And then kind of shakes their head and heads back to the bar. Unless you're into that, mm. and I can spill some drink on you if you want when we go to the bar. And heads towards the uh... bar together with that. <laughs> Nox. Mm. Yes. I know you love me, whatever. Yeah, you like things to get steamy, all right. 
<laughs> and then <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> sorry all the all the laughing coming from the hallway these like two yeah. masculine laughs oh my god it's oh, amazing <laughs> everybody in this place is sweating <laughs> okay so the two of you extremely tall dangerous people are now hanging back to the bar. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I love this. I'm hurting, I'm in pain, and I love this. So I would like to just check in with Ash, who has entered from the side door, and she has now come into the perfect line of sight of Dante and Cam. Ash, you are in their complete line of sight. You can't just dodge this. What do you want to do? I don't really know them, right? No, you've never seen them before. Technically, you don't even know if they're cult members or just people who live in the town. Yeah. Okay, so I'm at the back door from the bar, right? Yeah, what the are... side door. So side it's, door. it's not right beside the bar. It's like still the ways out because uh, you had to run away, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and they're coming from the lounge. No, they're coming from like the front door from outside. Okay, okay. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Besides the bar and the lounge and the entrance, there is the stairs. Yes, but the stairs are behind the bar. They're like further away. Okay. Oh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Ash would go back to the bar. Okay. Um, Haley saw them coming in, right? And yes. I think Ash probably saw Haley too, but they're very ashamed of what just happened. And oh. they're just like keeping their head low and just trying to find somewhere else to be. Oh, okay, Dante, you're watching this processing happen like maths. The maths are mathing in <laughs> his eyes. <laughs> All of this is happening. Did you want to say anything to her? I think they're just like with their head low and just trying to walk forward towards them. No, I don't think Dante would like really care about Ash. Oh, they okay. Don't... Does Dante know who Ash is? No, Dante's never seen Ash before. Okay, then yeah, no, no interest. Okay, Dante, where are you heading? Um, would Dante be able to see Nox in the hotel with the bar? Um, yes, so just to let you know, the portals are kind of like, there's the front door, you walk a bit forward, there's the side door, there are the, this kind of like half floor up, and then you make it to this kind of bar area, and past the bar there are two sets of stairs, one on the left, one on the right, and then towards the one on the left is the lounge at the very back of the hotel. So technically you could see Knox and Tal, but they're pretty far away, but they're very tall. So they probably stick mm -hmm. out over the rest of the people there. Yeah, they're loud. Um, but before you see Nox and Tally, you would see Micah's blue hair, and you recognize them. All right. Dante will quickly glance at Cam to see if Cam can also see Micah, and if there's no reaction from her, then they're just gonna head to Nox and Tal. All right. You walk past everyone at the bar then in order to make it to Nox and Tal before they reach the bar, right? Yeah. Okay. As you walk past, you cross paths with all three figures who are at the bar, Haley, Micah, and Morgan. Morgan, you recognize Dante as well. Do you do anything? I forget. Did Morgan like... have a good relationship with Dante? Or... No. Oh, they didn't? No. Um, oh, that's I mean, so sad. I mean, the last <laughs> moment they had was when Morgan beat, beat the shit out of Dante. Oh, right. Um, Morgan is gonna spit on Dante. <laughs> <gasps> nice. Cam's gonna look up and smile at that. <laughs> Dante, did you do anything? 
Okay, let me think. I did not see that coming. I, I was thinking that Morgan was gonna try and trip Dante. I didn't see the spit coming. <laughs> Alright, I think Dante's just gonna try and keep their cool. They literally just, you know, were released from jail. And they don't need to go back anytime soon. So they decide to ignore this transgression. This one time. <laughs> okay, well, so you just continue on towards Nox and Tal after Morgan has made this aggression towards you, right? Oh no, Dante's like standing in front of Morgan and just looking at them. They don't continue walking, but they're like standing and staring at Morgan, seeing if they're gonna say something. Morgan, do you say anything? Morgan's gonna take a swig of her beer and say to Dante, I could have sworn this lounge had a no trash rule. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, at this point, Dante will take that mug out of Morgan's hand and spill it into their face. Okay, roll volatile to snatch the beer. <laughs> Alright, okay. Oh my god, this is Val and Riley all over. <laughs> <laughs> History repeats itself. <laughs> Uh, oh god. Okay, uh... Roll the uh, two and a four. They, I could kill myself. Oh god. <laughs> Alright, so do you 13. throw the beer in Morgan's face, or do you smash the bottle on the ground? Into the face, yeah, definitely. And then, after they spill the beer into their face, they hit the bottle against the counter of the bar and get really close to Morgan and put the... <laughs> the bottle next to their neck as if trying to intimidate them. Okay, so I'm gonna roll Volatile very quickly, because technically when you roll a complete success, the person who gets attacked has to pause, so they, like, stutter, so they can't respond mm -hmm. immediately. I'm gonna roll Volatile as Haley, and I'm gonna pull a string on Morgan to help with the harm that I potentially- Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Haley is going to try to slug Dante, like, in the face, and what ends up happening is that as she's trying to do that, I think she just sort of, like, grazes the bottom of Dante's chin, because she's she's just slightly shorter. She just missed the depth perception a bit. So it knocks your jaw a tiny bit, but it doesn't actually deal any serious harm. It just distracts you from what you're doing. Um, Micah, you're watching all of this happen. You are right beside the action as well. Do you want to do anything? Can I just say that when Dante feels Haley's attempt at punching them, they just turn around real quick to her and say, that tickled. Okay, I'm gonna give Micah a chance to respond before I have Haley say anything. Micah's going to just step away. Like, they're gonna take their glass <laughs> and be like, oh, okay, and move like a, a meter or two away and just be like, all right, oh. <laughs> okay. Thanks, thanks for the loyalty, bestie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Morgan, I'm gonna give you a, a chance to respond as well before I have Haley respond to what Dante said to her, which was also an aggression. I was gonna have Morgan lash up physically. Do it. Okay, so that's volatile? Yes. Okay. My volatile is. Okay, 12, let's go. All right, so a 12 is a complete success. As such, Dante, when you smashed the beer bottle, like, at Morgan, technically you didn't specify whether or not you hit her or anything like that, so oh, no, I can't say I, that... I hit the bottle against the counter, so it yeah. smashed me. Yeah, you did the alcohol and then you hit the bar, so technically mm -hmm. you didn't actually hit Morgan, so I would say that you would have dealt a harm, but you didn't choose to actually physically assault. But when Morgan rolls the 12, Morgan, do you want to describe exactly what you do? Morgan is gonna, like, spear tackle Dante to the ground. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> oh, what? Okay, so Dante, the bottle is just flung from your hand as you get tackled to the ground by this person who is around your height and like muscular, surprisingly. So you are now like beneath them on the ground. You take a harm from hitting your head hard against the ground. And uh, Tal and Knox, you see this. Do you guys want to intervene? The first reaction for Knox will be like, oh shit, but kind of in an excited way, there's a sparkle in Knox's eye. Oh, it, is that a fight? <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, the thing is, Knox just stops mid the way with Tal and just heads towards what's happening. Tal? This is loud as fuck, yes, right? Yeah, I think it's in the middle oh. of the bar. <laughs> yeah, the smashing of the bottle especially would be really loud. Okay. Because <laughs> on Tal's hate list, oh God. she hates noise. <laughs> so, oh no. Yeah. When this happens and then Tal sees, am I right? Dante's underneath Morgan right now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, that's not good. Um... Uh, at this point, like, Nox is kind of staying in front of Dante Morgan. I think that if uh, the thing keeps going like that, I think Nox wants to use a, a move. Oh, okay. Ooh. What do you want to use? Nox wants to use not on my watch. When you come to someone's aid by gliding mm -hmm. at someone, threatening them, give them plus two to run away or plus one to hold steady, shut down or lash out. So I would give this to Dante. Um, mm. So like for how amusing this is, because it's is pretty <laughs> funny. Uh, Nox actually doesn't want Dante to be hurt, right? Um, yeah. So mm. even though Nox stays there for a little bit smiling and be like, ooh, this looks serious. When when actually <laughs> says the like Morgan, <laughs> Actually, <laughs> is like, hey, no, okay, that's enough. And like, he starts to head towards them. And also that is the move, not on my watch. All right, so Dante, you now have plus two to run away or plus one to lash out. What exactly do you want to do? Lash out. Okay, what do you want to do? Dante wants to headbutt Morgan. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so it will be Bye. nine. Yeah. No, I did my modifier. Oh you um, did. Okay. Yeah, I added the Okay, so one. an eight is a mixed success. So I think the thing for Lash Out physically is when you get a mixed success, I think the MC gets to decide how the harm turns out. Hold on, let me see. You do deal a harm, but I'm going to say that it wasn't like a complete success. It doesn't go exactly as you wanted. So you aren't able to headbutt Morgan to get off you, but the headbutt definitely hurts her. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Can Dante break uh, Morgan's noise? Uh, no, no, nose? Or would that oh. count as a complete success? I think breaking the nose would be a complete success, but you definitely, they like, Morgan now has a nosebleed. Nice, okay. All right. So that's one harm for each of you. Morgan, what do you want to do now? I think I'm just going to lash out physically again. Uh... Oh my god. <laughs> okay. I think that at this point, Ash, you're watching all of this, right? Yeah, it, as they were walking away, this all happened. <laughs> you noticed um, someone walk in the door. Oh. Oh. Who do yeah. I see? They're carrying a briefcase. <gasps> Where are they going towards? It seems like they've just come in from the sandstorm. They're trying to force the door closed behind them. Um, uh, no Ash like moves immediately close to them and tries to help them. Like, um, oh, come in, God, this sandstorm came out of nowhere. Okay, also, I just want to say that you successfully avoided someone who was looking for you or wanted your attention earlier, so you actually gain a string on Tal. Ooh, oh nice. my god. 
<laughs> Successfully <laughs> with a lot of <laughs> with a lot of struggle for sure. Yes. <laughs> Okay. They seem to appreciate your help. You managed to get the door closed. They're just like a small figure. They're wearing a modest outfit, long sleeve shirt with a high collar and work pants. They have a semi-buzzed haircut and little sort of moles on their face. And they clutch the briefcase in their arms and smile at you. Oh, thank you. What do you want to do? Do you need help or something? They shake their head, tell you that this is an extremely important document, and if they complete this task, then they'll actually get a promotion. Oh. They smile, and they it doesn't seem like they need your help. Uh, I, I would stay away from the bar if I were you. The, there's kind of a fight going on there. They look over towards the bar and nod reluctantly. As, like, Ash kind of points to the bar is the document like easy to take so it's like a briefcase with the documents inside but you could they're holding onto the sides of the briefcase and the handle is at the top where their chest is you could try and snatch it from the top this is such a bad situation um would i roll volatile or chance you would roll chance I think your modifier is the same for both, though, right? Mm, my volatile is better. Really? I thought your gambling was plus two. No, it's it's one. You could roll volatile if you wanted to punch this person in the face so they could drop their briefcase. <laughs> Chance would be to try to snatch it, which is more of a gamble. Volatile would be you would lash out physically. Yeah. But also thinking, where could I run to... After I get it. You can um, make it work, I believe. <laughs> I'll try. And I'll use the bar as a distraction. Nice. Oh, good boy. Thank you. <gasps> Wait, it hasn't loaded for me yet. It's a 12. Oh, it's a 12! <laughs> oh my god, okay. While this person has turned their gaze sort of naively, thinking that you are a friendly face, You reach out, grab the top of the briefcase deftly and snatch it out of their hands. And they are legitimately in too much shock to even do anything. They have completely frozen to the point where you could just back away. It doesn't seem like they're going to chase you. What do you do? I want to head to the elevator. Oh, okay. Are you going to pass everyone at the bar? (laughs) Oh, I have to pass to the bar? So the bar is kind of in like a big open space near the foyer. Um, You could try to sort of snake along the opposite wall and go up the other stairs towards the secondary platform where the elevator is. I would say that's maybe possible since people are distracted. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, Ash. Since you rolled a complete success for the gamble, I'm going to say that you actually make it to the stairs. Everyone is pretty preoccupied. Um, Tal, do you want to help Dante at all? Like, you were just defending them when you were talking with Nas. Yeah, don't worry about that. You just got bailed out of jail, dude. Oh my god. Um... What I was going to say is, like, Tal's going to try and grab Morgan's hair and shoulder to get them off Dante. Oh, my God. (laughs) Holy fuck. Okay. Oh, my Uh, God. (laughs) Tal. Yeah. (laughs) Hold on. Sending you death wishes. (laughs) Uh, Roll 2D6 plus. (gasps) You son of a bitch. Okay. Yes. Tal, do you want to describe what you do, Tal? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so at the noise already, Tal is annoyed, like not having a good time. Let Ash get away and then sees this bar fight ensue. Had drinks spilled all over them. <laughs> now is seeing one of their own get fucking. <laughs> chomped on on the floor so um tal is gonna storm over 
to Morgan. And while Morgan is like dipped over Dante, they're going to grab them right at the base of their head, right at the roots of their hair. And then like just yank them back to try and take them on the floor. Haha. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> that hurts. I don't know. Uh, what's the Tao Morgan ship name? Mortal. <laughs> no, Mortal. Mortal. Let's go. Yo. <laughs> Can I just say that Dante would like protest? They would turn to Tao and be like, hey, I got this. Tal does not hear that. I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I want want Dante to say that with a bleedy whatever is going on. (laughs) Voice crack? We're fine. (laughs) Um, Um, uh, Okay, Morgan, you get absolutely snapped backwards, like whiplash. You see stars and you take another harm and it knocks you back onto your haunches. And at this point, I think, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fail, I swear to fucking God. Can I say uh, something? Yeah, you can say if Nox does anything at this point. Yeah, like, uh, Nox was just kind of like watching with crossed arms at this point and seeing Tal doing the work and Dante there. And when Dante says, hey, I got this. Nox is kind of just like saying to Tal, yeah, Tal, like, don't you see that Dante got this indicating Dante on the floor full of dirt and blood and whatever. Everything is fine. Why are you just intervening? Come on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Tal does not answer. Tal is pissed. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, okay, well, Tal does um, not answer and is just focused on like Morgan's face if, if they fall back. No, because he's okay. amused. Um, Cam is laughing at this point. She finds this hysterical. Bar fights break out in the altar all the time. And so this is commonplace. Micah, I think you notice at this point that where Tal yanked Morgan, um, it was towards the bar stools backwards because she sort of like leapt at Dante from the bar stools and then got knocked back. I think at this point, Haley has like moved in front of Morgan but do you want to do anything at this point from this like aggressive violent situation do you want to keep sort of observing or can i ask is there any way micah can get to the lobby past these without (laughs) involving (laughs) oh my god i mean i yeah they're all pretty involved i think you could probably just walk around them (laughs) If that's what you want. <laughs> I have another question. Is Chrissy around somewhere or would it be hard to find her? Chrissy is nowhere to be seen. Chrissy usually shows up closer to like 10 or 11 p.m. Something about her is nocturnal. So I don't think I don't think she's around. <laughs> Does Chrissy live in a hotel? Is there any way to... <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> to say this, but to go and wake up Chrissy. <laughs> no, you have no idea where she lives. She is an absolute enigma, and <laughs> she will not wake up. <laughs> all right, all right. In that case, where did where, just real quick, where did Ash go again? Up the elevator. Ash went up the stairs to the second platform the where the elevator is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Micah's gonna decide to try and help Morgan out, seeing as they're struggling a bit. Um, unusual, but I guess it happens to everyone. You're gonna lash out physically. Against who? Tal? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> oh my god. I feel like Emma's getting... First. Emma's getting what they want. <laughs> exactly. what they want. Truly, Emma, you have no idea. <laughs> Cries. I okay. have minus one volatile, so... Oh, great yeah. heavens. And I'm not using my weapon, so... <laughs> yeah. Jesus. This is... Hold on, let's see. <laughs> oh! <gasps> okay. What exactly did you want to do? Micah was gonna walk up to Tal and grab them from behind on the shoulders with both hands and like jank them back from Morgan 
but maybe they can't move ta Tal at all now. Like, they're just a rock. <laughs> like, they can't even yeah. jump down. <laughs> yeah, Tal is just a solid brick. Just so strong and, like, obviously extremely engaged in this right now. So I'm going to use Haley's move. It's called tease when you shut someone down by denying them something they want especially if that's something as you roll as if you had cold three so i'm gonna say that a tell wants to like wanted to hurt morgan does that make sense like just stop yeah to stop like the altercation on dante yeah okay so yeah. i'm gonna roll <gasps> yo the coven <laughs> is not <laughs> I'm dying. I'm legit dying. This is so fun. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna say that Haley's attempt to stand in between Tal and Morgan, she tries to sort of appeal to the exact same impulse. Like, it was a trick, it was a move where. She tries to seem like she's not really paying attention, but she's kind of like, wow, isn't this exciting? Maybe we should all settle down for a moment before we get kicked out of the hotel. Tal, you can tell that this does not actually work on you in this mm -hmm. moment. It potentially aggravates you even further or it makes you more disinterested in the way that this altercation is turning out. So... Nox, you also see this. Yes. This wasn't a plea towards you, so you can have your own opinion of it. But Tal, you're allowed to react to this in any way you want. And because I lost for cold, you can also give me a condition. Oh, Haley a condition? Yeah. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think that when Nox sees that Haley is also involved, and that is a bit of chaotic nature around it's pretty nice because at least it's better than doing nothing but also these uh hmm. actually i don't think mm. that like <laughs> i don't think that nox is gonna try to calm things down oh my god <laughs> <laughs> nox say... is like <laughs> nox is kind of like enjoying this, this point... a little bit <laughs> what's can Dante? i just say that at this point Dante is back on their feet Okay, and are sure. kind of, and they're itching to to lash at Morgan again. We'll wait until Tal has the ability to give Haley the condition and like reply to that move. Oh, okay. Um, hearing Haley, I, I think Tal is snapped back at how ridiculous the situation is. Like, this is like small fry. What are we even doing? What's going on? And Tal's grip on Morgan's jacket is strong, but then kind of lifts them up like a little bit and then shoves them back on the ground and backs off um and then breathes through their nose and looks at Haley again and is kind of wondering like why the fuck do i keep running into you without saying anything and is looking at Haley. what's Haley's expression like so just to clarify did you touch morgan again just now oh wait after like yanking I... them yeah, like, I thought that when you yanked, you, like, yanked, she fell, and you had to let go. Oh, okay. Or okay, did you, like, yeah. have a grip on Morgan's hair? I, like, yeah, did have a grip on Morgan's <laughs> hair. Yeah, bringing it oh. back. Yeah. Okay, well, I probably wouldn't have tried to appeal to Tal. <laughs> I probably would have punched Tal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still holding Morgan oh, by the point. Finally, someone oh. has my back. Let's go. <laughs> so sorry. I'm holding them by the ombre, dude. This is... <laughs> uh, holy shit. Okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry I didn't clarify. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. So... <sighs> Nothing has worked, but if that is still the case, would it be okay if I lashed out physically? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Just because I, I didn't understand. Oh, it. Joy, Joy, Joy disappeared. Oh, Joy was gone. And <laughs> Morgan left. Oh my god, no one had Joy your died. back. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we were like, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, no, do your thing. It's totally cool. Yeah, lash out. Fuck yeah, do it. All right. <sighs> okay, like work. <laughs> So, a seven is a mixed success. Basically, what's gonna happen is, so you're still holding on to Morgan, right? Yeah, I was gonna slam them back onto the floor and let them go, but if you're gonna lash out physically right before Pal was gonna do that, then that's what it's looking like. Okay, well, since her last punch on Dante didn't quite work because her wingspan wasn't really good for a hook, she's gonna actually, like, uppercut Tal in the jaw and... <laughs> It's gonna, it's gonna hurt, like, your neck is probably gonna snap back a little bit. It definitely isn't, like, a kill shot. It, it doesn't completely knock you backwards, but it, it hurts, and you take a harm. Okay, great, okay. Does Tal still have a grip on Morgan? I would probably say that when you get hit, you lose the grip on Morgan's hair, but uh -huh. you don't get knocked over. I think a complete success would have been, like couching you um, okay yeah so tal lets go of morgan and like loses the grip and was not expecting their vision to go up to the ceiling and then looks to the floor and their hair gets disheveled it's usually slicked back after the like punch the strands get in their face <laughs> and then tal just like shakes their head a little bit and then rubs their lip and it's like bleeding and then they spit on the floor <laughs> And then look back up at Haley. <laughs> um, oh my god. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay, at this point, I think that Nox will kind of just try to get in between the two of them and be like, all right, okay, enough. Everybody's pissed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's calm down. Looks towards um, Tal. He's not looking at Haley. I'm like, okay. That's all right. Tal is like gripping Nox's like, wait, Nox is trying to get in front of Tal? Yes. What's oh, just, oh, okay. in front, just in front, in between uh, Haley oh, and okay. Tal. Uh, and he's not he's not touching Tal per se, but he's putting a hand in front of Tal. Let's all calm down. Like everybody's heated up here, right? Tal's like ex instinctively grabbing near the shoulder area of like Knox's shirt, and it's the bloodied hand, like the the, the mouth blood. And I'm so sorry. It's probably smearing on Knox's shirt. And then it's just, wow, it's just like trying thank, to keep in the dude. Like, I, it's not like I love this shirt or whatever. It's cool. No, but like, it wasn't on purpose. It's just kind of like, it was kind of like a grounding thing. Yeah, no, I like, know, yeah, I know. Yeah. But like, not to say that anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, and then, so, um, so yeah. Um, there was somebody who wanted to do something potentially to distract because this has been happening. There's a commotion. Some people are sort of passing by, like, oh straying their eyes towards it. Like, it's like a car crash. You literally can't look away. And, um, Ash, you've made it to the top of the stairs. Or what is it exactly that you wanted to do? She basically bolted the top of the stairs. Um, can I take a quick look at the suitcase? Is it, like, easy to open? So the suitcase has a combination lock. It's four numbers. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to perhaps break it open or you should be able to like maybe figure out the combination if you want it to be a little bit more stealthy. But you can't open it right now. I want to try and break it open. Okay. Do you have any tools or do you want to just try and smash it against something? Like slam it on the ground and see if it pops open. <laughs> I'd say they probably have a pocket knife that they would mm. try to like pry it open. Okay. So I'm going to say that, are you going to try and force it or are you going to try and jiggle it like you're like, lock picking? I'll try to lock pick. <laughs> All right. All. So <laughs> roll, roll chance. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, please. I believe. Oh, <gasps> 11. Yay! All right. You're able to pry the suitcase open. And inside, there's a collection of papers, dossiers. They all say classified on the outside. And if you skim through them, did you want to skim? Yes. All I right. I want to skim through and get like, the thing that I'm looking for. 
All right. So as you're skimming through the document, you notice that what you eventually find is these documents will tell you the location of the bridle. It's one of the sort of tools of the artifice that you've been looking for a while that will eventually, once all collected, will lead you to the spiritual hypocenter that you and Haley have been looking for. As you continue to peruse... Uh, Ash doesn't really take too long. They get the paper with that information specifically, and maybe a couple more that mm. look like important and I want to go towards the balcony. I I guess they didn't notice on the rush that there was someone else around. Mm. Yeah, Vera is standing at the balcony. She's still strangely dreamily watching all of this unfold. A tourist at the zoo. <laughs> And she hasn't really noticed you. So just so to be clear, you're not carrying the whole briefcase anymore. You're just you just took the relevant documents out. I want to do something with the suitcase. Yeah. <gasps> okay. What do you want to do? <laughs> Ash was heading towards the balcony, and they're gonna throw the suitcase open towards the bar. <gasps> okay. So you have the important documents, but you're yes. gonna throw the suitcase. Yeah. Just with the rest of it. <laughs> okay, do you walk, like, beside Vera to do this, or do you walk, like, far away from her? How big is it? But the, I guess they would go, like, they just saw someone, and would go towards the other way. But probably Vera would notice when, once they do this. <laughs> okay, so why don't you describe what exactly you do? Ash takes out the papers and goes towards the balcony and just throw the suitcase open towards the bar so it's papers flying around <laughs> all over oh my god <laughs> okay so i'm gonna say that dante you are fired up from this you're getting up you want to take another swing tal is still sort of like looking kind of dis disheveled um sort of upset Knox has had this little brief conversation Haley is trying to help morgan up from off the ground and then soaring out of the sky <laughs> this briefcase and all of these sort of classified looking documents that have so much redacted they all just come raining down around you it's impossible not to notice seeing that happen like oh my god like it's just like papers all over the place can we like not see who threw it uh Ash backs away from the balcony after they threw it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh, okay. Monster. I'm sorry, I'm like architecturally challenged. Is this on the same floor? No. No, so this is a second floor. So it's like a loft balcony, right? Like, so okay. the interior section of this hotel has a main floor and then a second floor with all of the elevators that's like a platform it's like a full story above but the ceiling is two stories high does that make sense yes mm -hmm. okay i also have this fun vision of after ash do this and like backs away and then turns around and sees vera it's like oh, oh. <laughs> just kind of staring at her oh, <laughs> so ash threw this from above yes yeah yeah she went upstairs oh my god Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. When Dante sees that, I think it clicks in their head that this has to be the briefcase with the documents that they were waiting for. So instead of going again after Morgan, who is now on the ground, disheveled, they decide to bolt to the stairs. And at the same time, they, they turn to Cam and just mutter a single word and they say fetch and i believe i have to roll for that yes you do oh my god okay so I... what move are you using right now katya fetch oh my oh it's a oh, oh, no. <laughs> no. thank god <laughs> i don't know what that does but thank god okay, what does that, okay, but okay what does that look like what does that look like when it happens so okay. basically fetch is a move that the custodian has so when you send your companion to collect something roll dark 
Uh, on a 10 plus, it does so stealthily. On a 7 to 9, it leaves chaos in its wake. I think so. what it would probably look like is when Dante says this, Cam probably transforms into the sort of black Doberman hellhound creature and will run towards whatever is happening. And I think that if she's doing so stealthily, she's like a prowling animal. And if she does it insane, she's probably like a police dog that's like gunning after someone, if that makes sense. And what about the fail? So on a failure, I think that is a refusal to do the task. I think Dante says this, and Cam's big yellow eyes are so engaged with everything that's going on. She can't look away. This is way too interesting. She sort of <laughs> looks at Dante and is like, no. <laughs> oh, fuck me. And then Dante just goes and runs up the stairs trying to see whoever got the documents, where they went, or if they can catch them. Okay, so if oh. you're gonna run, you're gonna have to roll volatile. Okay. <clears throat> and I say afterwards what Ash was doing? What? Yeah, absolutely. It's an mm. eight. Okay. So I'm gonna say that on an eight, so usually for run away, on a mixed success, you get away, but something happens. So you leave something behind, you run into something worse, or you cause a big scene. I'm gonna say that running towards this, you stumble for a moment where maybe you bump into Cam or you take a second to get a running start going, but you do eventually break off into a sprint. So, Ash, you're on the platform. You have just thrown the briefcase over the side, and there's obviously a lot of commotion happening there now. As you said, you stepped backwards. You looked over your shoulder, and Vera was standing there. What exactly do you want to do right now? Ash does a quick math on her head. It's like, oh fuck, <laughs> I brought attention to myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But, but then they also see that Vera is there and there's nobody else. So they quickly go towards her. Mm -hmm. I was like, V, um, you gotta come with me. And they try to pull Vera towards the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Vera is so shocked. She looks like a deer in headlights. Like, her eyebrows are really raised, and she has that, ooh, <laughs> look on her face. <laughs> like, she wasn't expecting this development. But she follows Ash to the elevator. Uh, I came very fast, like, the button, so it comes faster. But <laughs> Ash is, like, expecting people to come look for someone on that floor, and they mm -hmm. don't want like, to see, like, just Vera. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you now, there's two elevators that are side by side. Do you want to pick the left elevator to push the button for, or the right one? Tao <laughs> knew which one led to the penthouse. You do not. Uh, I'm just pushing both, so whatever comes faster. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> so... You're pressing both of these buttons, and the one to the right of you mercifully opens, and you step inside. You're hyperventilating. Oh, things are looking bad. The doors hover open for a little bit too long, and you hear the elevator beside you ding, and the doors open. Your doors begin closing just slightly, and you watch this extremely ominous figure walk forwards towards the platform and they look over their shoulder and make direct eye contact with you and you notice that it's T. Do you do anything? Um, Ash just like Vera looks like here <laughs> in spotlight like scared to their life but just frozen and seeing as the doors of the elevator are closing in. <laughs> The elevator doors close, and you haven't made a selection yet for what floor you want to go to. So if T decides to double back and press the button, the elevator will open. I, I'm pushing, like, my floor. Okay, yeah. 
So you hit the button for your allocated floor, and the elevator starts to hum upwards. Vera is still standing there, eyebrows raised, wide-eyed, looking at the ground, swaying back and forth <laughs> like she has no idea what's just happened. And she looks over at you with like her big eyes, like you're going to say something and wait. Um, so were you watching all that mess? Hard to miss, don't you think? Yeah, I think um, I had it with. <laughs> I thought it was great. <laughs> really exciting, jellyfish. You <laughs> certainly have a, a flair. <laughs> Pretty extravagant. I loved it. Uh, if someone asked, it wasn't me. Oh no, my lips are sealed. I promise. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that maybe someone could come look and would probably be better if you were not there. Ooh. Um, what are you doing here? Oh, um, I don't know. I was a little bored at the shop. <laughs> no one's coming in and collecting rabbit's foots <laughs> on a Friday night. Something's always happening here, though, so I like to just watch. I hope that doesn't make me sound like a weirdo. <laughs> no. You're good. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't mean to pry or anything, but so you want to tell me what the deal with all that was? I mean, I don't pry about your stuff. Yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> mm. I mean, I, I guess I can just say that I was trying to stop the fight downstairs with a little distraction. Mmm, that's really admirable. I really appreciate it. I'm sure Chrissy will appreciate it too. I will be sure to tell her that. Please do not mention my name again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. No, no names. What, do you need any help or anything like that or do you want me to um, just head back downstairs real discreet and pretend like i didn't see anything yeah i guess you could go but maybe it would be a little suspicious if you just went now it's up to you wow super non-committal it doesn't matter if i stay or go huh i see how it is all right honeybee that's fine um i'm just not trying to push in anything <laughs> Well, maybe I'll stick around and just kick it for a little while and then when all of this heat cools down and hopefully maybe some people settle down and start drinking again, I'll head back downstairs. That's that. Yeah. Yeah, you can stay for a little bit, yeah. I sorry in advance for the mess. And I guess at that point maybe they're just like reaching Ash's door. Um Vera says mess is good for business. You always need something to clean up. You don't like when the shop is messy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Other people's mess is fun, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, fair, yeah. <laughs> um, then Ash opens the door, and as Vera comes in, it, she can notice that there is some like handcrafted like extra locks. <laughs> Like, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> on the door not very like fit in something probably that ash made just to make sure like extra safety and the room also isn't as tidy as as you would expect from her i guess i think that vera has an understanding of ash's need for privacy so she doesn't really make any comments about the locks. She also knows how dangerous the town is, so I think that she's pretty understanding of the whole situation. And I think that, if anything, she finds Ash's messy <laughs> room kind of relatable, because mm -hmm. Bear is very messy in her shop. So she doesn't really see anything. She just hangs out a little bit by the kitchen area. Yeah, and there's just like movie posters on the wall. Do you think you're just gonna lay low here for a while? Does anybody n know where you are? I mean, I, I guess they can figure it's better if I'm not down there right now. Mm, slippery, just like a jellyfish. I always knew. 
<laughs> Chick just like motions to the arm. Yeah, just like the jellyfish. <laughs> Is there anything, Ash, that you want to do, like, in this moment, now that you've made it to your room? I think that all of the rooms are, like, suites, so you have a separate bedroom, a little bit of a living room, and then a little kitchenette that has, like, an oven, a fridge, cook space, and a little table. The windows are along the back wall, and they all look out towards the canyon. The sky is, like, full of stars. It's pitch black outside now. Nothing ever gets as dark as the desert. What do you feel like you want to do? You have these files. You're finally in safety, you think? What's mm. on your mind? I think Ash would probably offer something to Vera. Not that she's there. But I think they would wait to have a proper look at the papers until she's gone. Okay. So do you mean like, Ash is like, do you want some water or something like that? Yeah. And also ask again, like, about what have they seen, I guess, being up there? Oh, I saw you get into quite a scuffle, stumbling over your feet. I guess you're not a land creature, are you? <laughs> I was a little worried about you for a moment, but came back. I had faith. It, um, it was not my best moment. I'm sorry you witnessed that. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We've all had stumbles and falls, and... Look at you. You ended up on top and you stopped the fight. It's pretty impressive. I guess so, yeah. I don't really know if I saw anything else too enticing. I did notice that some of the people fighting seem to have pretty interesting relationships. Like this big one kind of walked over to one of the groups, gave them a once over. It didn't really seem hostile, but then, oh man, <laughs> the <laughs> escalation of that fight actually started when the scary one with the ponytail, she spat at Dante. It was pretty funny, I can't lie. <laughs> yeah, I guess the Ash figures, like who they're talking about, they have like a more chaotic vibe, I'd say. You never know what will happen. <laughs> It seems to be the standard in this town. <laughs> yeah. Do you think I'm I'm gonna have any fallout at the shop for this if they catch you working? Should I keep you in the back for a while? If any of them show up, yeah. I I'll probably just hide in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I would appreciate if you could cover it for me. God, of course. Anything for you. I got a lot of shelves in the back. You can stock. You're taller than me. You can reach them better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why you got me to work for you. Just so I could <laughs> reach the shelves. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> also, maybe stay a little bit like out of the other group business. If, if well, you can. You mean the choir? Yeah. All right. I'll take you at your word. <laughs> you oh. saw them down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not necessarily the friendliest bunch. The Brady bunch, this little religious family. <laughs> at this point, is there anything else that you're curious about, Ash? Or do you think I should head downstairs? Would T have noticed, like, both of them on the elevator? Or more just Ash? If you was on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, just to complicate things, I think that T would have seen both of them in the elevator. Uh, and <laughs> is Ash aware like, of T being the leader of the choir? I would say so, yeah. Okay. Back there at the elevator, I think Taya might have saw us. And again, it would be better if no one knew who did the little distraction. So it could not tie to you. I mean, listen, I'm kind of important in this town and I've been neutral for a long time. If anything, I can just say I was causing trouble. It doesn't have to be you, honey. I, I would not want to put that on you. It's okay. 
what if at some point oh my gosh we just found this briefcase and we were like what's inside oh no it slipped oh oopsies <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean if it comes to it we can use that excuse okay so I think that she giggles and then maybe sits down and like accepts the water if Ash ended up offering her any and I'm I'm gonna move unless also, you wanna... I, I just wanna say that the whole time that Ash was downstairs she was like all serious but it just looks as a riffy aww does Ash smile? yes oh, she, no. she laughs at her jokes <laughs> <laughs> kills myself <laughs> oh my gosh okay so Finally, Ash is happy. <laughs> really quickly, Dante, you were sprinting up the stairs. Unfortunately, because you didn't have a complete success, you weren't able to actually catch and apprehend Ash as she was escaping. You're turning the sort of wide corner of the stairs and making it to the top. You see the elevator closing, and you look and you notice Taya, who is watching the elevator close. You're looking at the back of their neck right now. What do you do? Oh god. Poor Dante. Uh, um, I think their first instinct would be to just scream, Stop the elevator! But obviously it's too late. <laughs> and does Taya turn towards Dante? Yeah, Taya makes a slow, deliberate turn and then looks at Dante. Okay. They got the documents. Dante! <laughs> Taya doesn't say anything. They're completely stone-faced, looking at you as though you haven't given them the full explanation. Hey, dude. I, I'm so sorry. Morgan was down there. I just couldn't keep it together. Do you say anything else? I'll fix this. Taya lifts their head backwards so that their jaw kind of turns up and looks down at Dante from the bridge of their nose and still doesn't say anything. Dante's gonna approach the elevator and without looking at it, they say, I'm gonna search every room until I find them. I'll get the documents. As Dante's approaching and making it to the elevator, Tay's gonna lift a hand up and without looking at Dante at this point, turn their head down and say, we're going to clean up first. And then walk away from Dante towards the stairs. Oh, um, <laughs> no. Okay. So sorry. Okay, so company at the bar. Dante, do you want to follow Taya's instructions and trail behind them towards the bar, or do you want to disobey Taya and go to the elevator? At this point, Dante's just going to do as they're told. Okay. So, company at the bar, it almost seems like all the noise has settled at this moment. Like a sort of static crackle of electricity has begun to prickle everybody's skin. And mm, does anybody turn, perhaps, to see the person descending the stairs? Nox does turn and sees both Taya and Dante coming downstairs. And Nox knows everything is a uh, disaster uh, and Kanda, is, Kanda says quietly to nobody, but Tal probably hears and, say, and says, shit. <laughs> Tal actually doesn't look right away and realizes what happened and not panicking or anything, starts picking up like some of the papers off the floor just to try and salvage what's left just to clean up and take everything that is there. Mm, I think um, at this point, I think the, like, Nox is also gonna say to everybody who is not part of the choir specifically, like, just normal people who were there, if there were any, to leave the place. I think that people clear out when... Ah, when they Nox already cleared the out. <laughs> Ah, okay. No, like, yeah, like you say it and they all get up and leave. Yeah, yeah, like the Nox says, Okay, everybody, time to go. Sorry. Get your drink and just get out. 
something like that and goes around the room like that. Morgan, do you do anything when Nox is getting people out? When you maybe notice that T is descending the stairs? What's Haley doing? Haley is watching. If you look at her, she's like mentally marking the exits. She's looking at T and then she's looking to the side and she's like looking in her peripherals and stuff like that, but she's not really moving. Morgan's gonna slowly drift closer to Haley and kind of roll her shoulders a bit and just keep glaring at T. Micah, do you want to do anything? Yeah, Micah's gonna sit back at the bar and continue to drink and just have a sip after that intense situation. (laughs) Uh, I want to say that if Micah does that, Nox is actually gonna walk up to Micah because Micah is not part of the choir and Nox is gonna be like, knocking at the table and be like, okay, you should just go for now. We'll be back open later. Oh, when? When? You will know, because you will see people coming here. I'm not sure you understand. I wanted to finish my drink now. Look, look, pal, I just... It's 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 okay. Hey, hey. Miss God, Miss God, can I interrupt really quick? Yeah. Yeah. Hearing this happen, can Tal use the move temper? Ooh, yeah. Do you want to read out to everybody what it does? Yeah, so when you think about something you hate on your hate list, choose something that bursts into flame and roll with volatile. Oh my god. Tal really annoys and anybody that is not listening to like when the choir wants something. And mm. Tal wants to burst the glass in Micah's hand to like make Fuck it like yeah. Oh my god, do it! Okay, and You're gonna I have to... Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, but yeah, 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 hold on. Do you have to roll for that? Can it explode because it's alcohol? Yeah. Volatile. Okay, one second. I'll tell you what can happen. Bye, Micah. <laughs> you shall <laughs> <left>. <laughs> Hold on, I think that's a plus. Nine. <laughs> okay. Okay, so okay. on yeah, a 10 yeah. and up, the fire catches and burns on a 7 to 9 as above, but choose 2. Someone realizes you caused it, it spreads out of your control, you gain the condition drained, or that thing takes a bit of harm. So I get to choose from those options, and I'm going to pick someone realizes you caused it, mm-hmm. and I'm going to select the condition drained for Tell. All right. Okay, well, do you want to explain, like, exactly how it happens? Uh, yes, the moment Knox and Micah are, like, starting to bicker instead of Micah just getting out, Micah's going to feel their drink warm up, and suddenly you're going to hear glass, like, cracking, and then it's going to, like, pop, and then, yeah, whatever that may be. <laughs> I'm not really good with flavor, I'm so sorry. No, it was literally yeah. perfect. Do Maybe it burns them. Else? Yeah, it could burn them, but I, it, they're not going to take harm. Like, the, I could have chosen for them to take harm, but I didn't. Okay, so I'm going to say that the person who can't realize that you've caused it is Nox, because Nox already knows that you have these abilities. So yeah. you can choose either Micah, Morgan, or Haley to know that you are the person that just lit that fire. Because otherwise, like, it just seems like a freak accident that happened. Yeah. No, I'm going to choose Micah, because, like, Tal's going to be looking at Micah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so, Micah, you're holding the glass in your hand, and Nox is trying to intimidate you out of the bar. And also, Nox, you can roll for intimidate after this as well, if you would like. Yeah, I was going, Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. So, you feel this... (laughs) object, the sharp object just completely shatter in your hand and there's this like hot white hot tingle and then it's gone and there are these little embers just like glowing on the on the table of the remaining bits of alcohol and you know that Tao is the one who just performed this elemental fucking mystique on you like this magician parlor trick <laughs> Before Nox has a chance to make eye contact with you again, how do you react to this? So it doesn't actually harm Micah? Or no, is no. like glass splittering? 
No, yeah, it doesn't cause oh. any harm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Micah's just gonna have their hand open as like the glass explodes, and it's a short moment where they're looking at their now empty hand and look over and make eye contact with Tal, clicking their tongue and going, guess the drink's empty. I'll <laughs> take my leave then. And they get up and uh, start uh, Tal walking. does not break eye contact with Micah and is waiting for them to leave the door. <laughs> uh, as soon as there is uh, Micah just like slowly going away, Nox is just looking at them and going, damn. Damn, Tal. Today you're on fire. And like, smiles stupidly at that. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay, so Micah, you leave? Yeah, but Micah's gonna look over to Haley and Morgan and nod with their head towards the exit and go, shall we? Morgan, what do you want to do? She's not gonna move unless Haley does. Haley's not moving. Then Morgan stays put. <laughs> Can I say that if Haley is just there, Nox would want to slowly approach Haley and be like, I think it might be best if you just go for now. Maybe you can come back later, whatever business you have to do. It was going to look at Nox, and you can actually tell that Haley is changing a bit. Her eyes are like glowing that iridescent green color. She looks a bit scarier than usual. And she says back to Nox with this sort of like fake, cooish, coquettish voice. As far as I remember, you can't conduct choir business at the altar. I don't have any reason to leave. I should be able to go up to my room. You are absolutely right, but like things are a bit heated as you can see. And then glances back at Al for a moment. And then looks back. Can't you just go for now and come back? Is that too much to ask? Are you gonna throw me out on the street, little soldier? I don't know, is that something that would turn you on? Maybe I can do that. I think we should have this conversation again another time. But listen, I'm not gonna cause any more trouble. Me and my good friend here are gonna head upstairs and we're not gonna cause any commotion. How about that? Yeah, if you go to your rooms, sure. But don't stay here. And Nox now doesn't look as amicable as usual. It's kind of like more of a serious tone. Haley's gonna look at Morgan and like smile deviously, like she's about to do something really bad. <laughs> um... <laughs> oh my god. Jesus. And then she's gonna say to her, What do you say, sweetheart? Are we going upstairs? Whatever you want, Miss Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna like look back over her shoulder. Is Micah still walking towards the door? Oh, I thought the exit is into the lobby and then. Yeah, like the lobby is behind the bar, so it's like further oh. along. So you'd be walking away from everybody if you were walking towards the door. Oh, Lamau, no. Um. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm the so mom, sorry. No. I'm still lost. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll make a map of the altar that'll make it a little bit clearer. I promise. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. I guess Micah hears what Haley said and is just gonna tag along. Is that okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Just yeah, turning oh back God, and, and not just looking at Micah just no, like, like, going to the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> Tagging along with Ailey Morgan. I thought the exit of the bar meant like going to the lobby and then we can go up the stairs or, uh, or whatever. Oh, but okay, whatever. okay. I see. <laughs> totally, my bad. All right, so I think that Haley would probably put her hands into her chaps and kick her feet with her like spurs ringing and walk out into the center of this area where Taya is like descending the stairs and Tal you've grown 
so accustomed to the way that Taya's footfalls sound that you can actually tell when Taya is on the same floor as you guys mm. when they've made it all the way down the stairs. How are you feeling right now? Pal is stiff as fuck. Feels like there's been reinforced rebar on their spine and is just not ready for what kind of conversation can ensue after this area clears out. But is like doubly, triply extra careful about their moves like right there on the same floor as them. So Taya is going to walk slightly past all of you, very like meticulous measured movements. They're going to lift the bar entrance, the little panel, walk into where the bar is and pull out a very expensive bottle of gin and then open it and begin to pour it into a wide, short glass. Um, Taya doesn't really drink, so this seems to be a bit of a concerning development. When they're done pouring the alcohol into the glass, they put the little cork in and then slide the alcohol towards T. Tal, sorry. Taya slides the alcohol towards Tal. T and T is gonna mess me up so much. Sliding back to themselves. themselves. (laughs) Yeah, passes the drink to themselves, like swings it in between both hands like a pong. (laughs) <laughs> uh, Tal immediately at that site puts the stack of papers they've collected so far on one of the remaining bar stools that are up. Um, and it's really hard um, already, but Tal knows that they cannot read T's face and is almost like avoiding their gaze, but doesn't want to seem like they're not going to own up to what just happened, so they do make direct eye contact with T and kind of eyes the glass and then back at them and gently takes the glass without moving it towards themselves yet and waits. T gets out another glass, takes the gin, pours it really full, painfully full, and then slides it towards Dante. Dante takes it without saying anything just quietly, obediently. Taya's gonna look at Nox now. What does Nox look like? Nox looks like he's trying to give a half smile, but he knows that everybody's in trouble right now. So he's not trying to make jokes or whatnot. He's just a little bit nervous. He knows that everybody fucked up. But he looks at and uh, doesn't look down or anything, just stares at tea. T gets out another glass and pours the gin in and then slides it towards Knox and then looks at Morgan and stares at her. Morgan, is there anything you want to do? Wait, wasn't Morgan with uh, Haley on the other r- room now, in the other room? No, they're not in the other room. They backed up towards the middle. The bar is on the wall. Um, oh, gotcha. So they're facing the bar now, yeah. Okay, sorry. Morgan is just gonna smile, staring at back at T, and rub her thumb against her face right where her scar is on the cheek. Okay. Haley is going to look up at Morgan, since Morgan is so tall. Um, <laughs> and give Morgan like a little smile and a little shoulder nudge and then not exactly doing this but with the exact same spirit of going like to a horse like walks towards the stairs and Micah do you follow? I'm so sorry who did the cheek click? Oh she didn't do the cheek click it was just like the same kind of spirit as like leading like when you lead a horse and you're like Letting them know where to go. She's just a cowgirl. Oh, yeah. It's just in her nature. <laughs> sorry, Haley. Yeah, sorry. I was zoning out for a second. Okay. No, it's okay. Um, <laughs> Micah's gonna follow, yeah. <laughs> okay, Morgan, Micah, you make it up the stairs with Haley. Can I interrupt real quick? Oh, sure. As they're leaving, Dante turns to Morgan and says, We're not done here. Morgan's gonna ignore it and not even look at Dante. (laughs) 
Haley's gonna laugh. <laughs> and then if everybody else is done interacting with them, I think that's it for the coven. I think they're gonna go upstairs and go to their rooms. Okay. Is that okay? We're almost done. Yeah. Okay, so T is um, standing at the bar and has poured you guys your drinks, your very expensive drinks, and sort of now that the interlopers are upstairs, takes a pace back and leans against the back of the bar and crosses their arms across their chest and looks at the three of you and waits for an explanation. I, I fucked up. It's my fault. Uh, I told you I... Morgan was there and they just couldn't keep their mouth shut and things happened so sorry they look at Tal and Nox to see if they have anything to say for themselves Nox uh, looks at <laughs> T and uh, Dan thing sips a little bit of the drink <laughs> <laughs> Can't let that expensive drink go to waste. <laughs> it's on you, Tal. Yeah. Oh my god. Wait, what? It's on you. You can explain. Oh my god, bitch! <laughs> it's like a game of hot potato. Dude, I feel like I'm with a sibling right now, and like <laughs> I'm in front of a parent. Holy lord. Tal clenches their jaw again at <laughs> seeing Nox like taking a sip of the drink and not say anything, but then like loosens up and then says, "Yeah, it seems like <clears throat> they they had interrupted the delivery." Looks at Dante and knows that they were on the front porch, but just doesn't say anything. And say that also Ash Ash was here and I think she threw the papers all over the place. Taya takes a moment and just like listens and then looks down so all you can see is their hat. Does anyone else want to say anything? This drink is okay. Keeps looking at the drink. Oh, under the brim okay. of the hat, Taya cracks a tiny bit of a smile. They look up and walk towards all three of you. And for a moment, it seems like all of you should stand at attention when they do this. And they look between the three of you and they say, we should all be celebrating. Oh. Do you understand what's happened? We fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Tal like squints their eyes a little bit, but waits for the next words that that Tay is gonna say. What we're looking for, they're looking for. So now we don't even need to find the information. We already know who they are. All we have to do is watch and then catch them. You got their names? Mm. Did you? <laughs> Nux is thinking like, wait a second, trying to connect the dots. Nux is a bit of a little dummy. Um, he's like, wait, are you talking about those three people that were here before? Blue haired one is Micah. And the one with the hat is Marshall. Nox is oddly quiet, doesn't say anything, and sips a but little bit like, of the drink. <laughs> but Tal does take a note that earlier when Haley and Nox were talking, there was a bit of like, they know each other. And there was like some talk about turning someone on, and Tal was <laughs> kind of... Um... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Nox, Nox, uh, <laughs> when when Nox sees Tal thinking and stuff, Nox like just looks back towards Tal, gives a look. You can't see anything because Nox has <laughs> his oh, glasses, oh. but gives a look and <laughs> just like somebody standing like in the front. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 
god. I'm so sorry. Hold on one second. I'm gonna send like an emoji really quick. Oh my god, please. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's exactly it. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, oh my god. Oh jeez. Dies. Okay, so all of this though, Nox doesn't say anything. Nope. Okay, so Taya sort of like nods and looks down at the table again, and then looks at Dante and says, collect all the documents. There should be 36 pieces of paper. Depending on how many we're missing, we'll know how many to look for. Don't get your dog to do it. You should do it yourself. Of course. Tal's gonna hand the papers that they collected so far and gesture them towards Dante. <laughs> Dante takes them. And then they like turn to T and without looking at them, Dante says, and for the record, her name is Camino. T says nothing. <laughs> Say oh. please. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nox looks around the room a little bit and says, This went pretty good, right? <laughs> you absolute nightmare. Tal is just gonna is just gonna drink all the drink. <laughs> Yeah, Dante's the... gonna Dante's gonna take the shot like at that <laughs> point, <laughs> and then is gonna make enough noise to put the glass back, and then starts picking up any bar stools because yeah, like we respect the altar. Yeah, no, not gonna space. do the same. It's gonna <laughs> slowly like just try to clean around the place a little bit as well. Very slow. Yeah, Anta's gonna get a like a broom and start cleaning up the broken <laughs> bottle. <pieces. laughs> Would you say that the three of them try to leave the bar area, or are they cleaning um, around the bar? Does the bar area have a broom somewhere nearby? Uh, okay. yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I think, think Anta's gonna stay around there. I think that Nox would look around the area and like if he sees that like everybody's around the bar area, we'll probably try to look around and see if he can clean, like if there is any damage around, try to clean there. Mm. Tal's just gonna clean up what they affected really quick and then is eyeing the stairs, remembering mm. that Cam was like basically about to look sick up there and then makes like eye contact with Dante and Knox and then just says, I'm just gonna check something out. I'll be right back. Sure. Um. Before Tal goes, is there something that Taya can say to her, like, under their breath? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yes. <laughs> um, Taya walks up behind Tal and says over their shoulder to Tal very quietly so that Nox and Dante can't hear. Some of the spies have said that there's foot traffic in the catacombs. We think someone is meeting there illegally to discuss some secrets. Tal doesn't turn their head all the way, but is like just turning their ear to show T that they're listening. And then just one small nod, one small terse nod. Like just... mm. Taya says, I need you to be the only one can trust okay and then uh, Tal kind of looks down at the floor T knows what that means like kind of a yes of course okay Tal what did you want to do upstairs Tal actually wants to go near the balcony area because I remember when they were up there for a little bit they had seen Vera right yes they had okay Tal's gonna look and obviously, Veer is not there anymore, right? Yeah, no. Okay. Tal's gonna touch like the balcony where Vera was resting, and is gonna gaze into the abyss. Ooh, yeah, please do. Um. 
I'm sorry. Like, I did not think this through. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Holy. Um, <laughs> stop, <laughs> babe. No. Um, <laughs> um, I guess Tal's gonna ask, like, why were they here? Like, the group of people today, why were they here and did what they did? I don't know, like something, ah, I'm like having a hard time centering my question, but like, what can I ask in the nature of that? Okay, well, um, it's apparent to you that they were obviously here for the document, because that's what they were trying to, like, Yourself. sort of distract from, and mm. yeah. But you could ask, what do they need it for? Or you could ask, are they going to be an obstacle to me, or you could ask, where is the document now? There are a couple things. Okay. Yeah, Tal's gonna ask where the document is now. Because, yeah. Because it's like, <laughs> the papers would not have been spread all over the place. Like, somebody had to take shit. Somebody had to. So that's what Tal's gonna ask. Like, where is the pieces of paper or documents? All right. Um, so Dark, right? Is that dark? Or... Yes. Oh, my dark sucks. I believe in you. Oh! Eight. So an eight is a mixed success. So the abyss shows you confusing images and visions, but you get your answer nonetheless. So what I'm going to say is that the sort of confusing part of this is that you see a collection of hallways. It seems you're in this sort of endless march towards a room uh you're trying really hard to figure out what floor this is on it's very evidently the altar itself the documents have not left this building you aren't able to tell exactly what room number it is but you are able to get a second chance at the idea that this is on the fourth floor of the altar so if you investigate that floor you will likely find it there's only about 10 rooms per floor okay Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Um, and... Nox and... Oh, sorry. Please. Oh, no, no. Sorry. I was just humming to myself, like, thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to give Nox and Dante a chance to say anything else, and I think we're going to end with Morgan, Micah, and Haley coming out of the elevator. Nox, did you want to talk to Dante at all? Taya has left towards the lounge to leave you guys to clean up your mess. <laughs> yes. So I think Nox at some point of cleaning a little bit, like putting chairs around and stuff, kind of goes towards Dante and says, oh, Damn, you couldn't wait a second to start fighting with somebody again, huh? Look, Morgan spat at me and I believe I deserve a reward for not punching them for that. But then they couldn't keep their mouth shut. So. No, but seems pretty fair to... I don't know. Get at someone's throat for spotting you. I would do the same, actually. Maybe with my butt, mm. more so. But still, like, mm. I don't know. Do you want to oh, go I... back to jail so soon? Either way, he's gonna bail me out. Ah, Doesn't that's true. Really yeah, I guess. What well, are you doing, by the way, while this was happening? I was vibing, as usual. Doing my job and vibing. That's what I do, right? Kind of smile, <laughs> no, smiles the, weirdly. The funny thing is you weren't doing your job because while I was indisposed, they got the documents. Well, I was, as you could notice at some point, I was very preoccupied with the fact that somebody was beating your ass down and I was looking for weak points. So I was just watching, I had you it, know. I had it under control. Oh yeah, sure. It seemed like you had everything under control. And obviously, this is very ironic. Nox doesn't say this, but this is ironic. <laughs> uh, Dante turns to, to Cam at this point and says, This one looks quite alive for someone who was supposed to be dead and kicked off a cliff. <laughs> Wait, did you tell Dante that you kicked me off the cliff? <laughs> Nox starts laughing. Is that off? <laughs> yeah, Cam smiles and she's got these like jagged 
yellow shark teeth. And she looks over at Nox and says, yeah, he probably wishes he got kicked off a cliff. This was a clusterfuck. Actually, yeah. You want to try to do that right now? Because maybe it's better than cleaning the floor around with this one, looking at Dante. No, if I get rid of you, they're going to make me clean. I don't want to do that shit. Maybe we should both just jump off a cliff. I think that would be for the best. Yeah, but if oh. you jump off a cliff, how are you going to reconvene with your girlfriend? Wait, your girlfriend? As a matter of fact, I have so many partners. You wouldn't know because, you know, and just... Oh and Nick just says it back <laughs> You wouldn't know. I get laid so much, you wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> wait, wait, hold up. What am I missing here? Maybe a partner? Yeah. That's what you're missing. Oh, it's okay. And Nox uh... just pats Dante's shoulder like this. I have a partner, but not voluntarily. Oh, no, that kind of partner. Like, a dog is not a partner. Sorry, Cam. <laughs> no, none taken. I am not the partner. Maybe if you were a man, I'd be your best friend. But, no less. Nah. <laughs> and then he just laughs. laughs. At this point, Dante will also laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna check in very lastly with the coven one more time. Haley, Morgan, and Micah are all stepping out of the elevator towards Ash's room. They're all walking. Haley seems to somehow know that the lack of presence that Ash has <laughs> taken in this entire little kerfuffle, it's likely that she has some kind of involvement and Haley kind of trusts Ash in a weird way. Morgan and Micah, do you want to say anything to each other? Mm. No. <laughs> I was so Riley like in dying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Micah. Oh, sorry. I guess is there gonna be time to talk in the room, or is that gonna be cut short? Yeah, no. If you guys are okay with spending another like five to seven minutes, we can talk in the room. Yeah, then in the room, in, like in a private space, would be better. So Micah won't You're. say anything. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Okay, so the three of you make it to the door, and Haley gives a little whimsical knock to <laughs> let Ash know that it's her. Uh, does Ash answer the door? Ash is probably familiar with Haley's knock, so they for a second like get scared that door's knocking, but they realize who it is, and then they go to open. Okay. When she sees Ash, Haley smiles and sort of walks in. Micah and Morgan, what do you do when you make it to Ash's room? Morgan's gonna look at Ash and just say, Where the hell were you? Saving her ass, I guess. Um, then Ash, like, turns around to Vera. I think we gotta cut this a little short. I'm sorry. Vera gives her a polite and, like, knowing smile and then steps out silently. She glances back over her shoulder and just gives her a little nod, hope everything's good with you, and then walks outside. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Micah, you're in the room now. Do you want to say anything? Micah's going to plop on some chair, stretch <laughs> out, and be like, So, I assume you were the one who threw those papers all over the place. Ash? Well, I thought we were supposed to make this, like, quietly. But That's then... what I thought too, but... And now looking at Morgan, seems like <laughs> someone didn't get the memo. Would have gone a lot quieter if I had more people with me. I saw you were the one that started the fight, though. <laughs> oh, please. That piece of shit down there started. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, well, someone got the papers that we were supposed to. You're welcome. <laughs> and she takes out, like, I think she took the one with the location and a couple more that they haven't had the time to look at yet. And she unfolds them and hands it to Haley. It's about the bridal. <laughs> 
You know that scene in Treasure Planet where Captain Amelia looks at the little map for the first time and gets like those like big cat eyes? I think this is like how Haley takes the documents, sort of skims over them with her eyes. Um, mm. and there, she... there's, a, there's a little disappointment as Ash tells Haley which relic, whatever it is that they found. Um, and surprisingly, Haley gives. Ash's arm like a little squeeze doesn't really say anything but sort of gives her a moment and then she looks <laughs> back at Micah and then Ash again and it's like now you'd be well not to fight I'm not gonna break it up you guys aren't children but Ash would you have been able to get the briefcase if Morgan wasn't throwing punches I mean there's always some other way <laughs> yeah because, but... yeah that was that was quite the distraction a little appreciation would be nice, wouldn't it? <sighs> they kind of like look <laughs> the side to Morgan and like <laughs> grumpily. Uh, I guess yeah, that your way also work. Morgan's gonna nod at Ash and use her shirt to wipe her bloody nose. <laughs> I forgot Morgan had a bloody nose. <laughs> yeah, I took a lot of hints. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for this stupid group. Um, oh Morgan's gonna God. look at Micah again. And just be like, Micah, we've known each other what three years now, and I couldn't help but notice that you took your sweet time trying to get in on that fight. Yeah, well, if you had actually known me, you know I'm not a fighter, and you still started a fight. So, I'm sorry. Alright, I tried to help you. We all have our strengths in this little group. Yeah, and, you know, the whole time you were doing what exactly? What strengths were you bringing? Why are we talking about this? You know what I think is interesting? And <laughs> Mike is gonna look at Haley. So, you seemed very familiar with that tall skyscraper dude. What was that? See, I'm gonna tell you because we're a fucking team and I'm tired of whatever this bullshit is. Micah, I don't care if you think you're gonna get punched in the kidneys. If Morgan is taking heat, you will do your best to help because if I see you getting your ass kicked, what if Morgan and I just say, fuck you, we walk away? You want that? What's the point of being a group if we're not looking out for each other? That's bullshit. You know it. Micah's actually gonna flash a smile and go, All right, all right, you know, maybe I had a little bit too much to drink, but all right. I got you next time, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll be on the lookout for that. And um, in regards to... The skyscraper. Wow, what a dreamy name. <laughs> I think it's always beneficial to have a coin in your pocket. Why would you spend time only getting close to your allies? You can get close to your enemies. You know something about that, wouldn't you, Ash? I think you too. What about you, Micah? Have you got a coin in your pocket? Micah's just gonna nod and drop it. Alright. Now are we done questioning each other? Like we're fucking cops? Yeah, sure. Nice. <laughs> Cause we won. <laughs> you got the documents, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dea kinda saw me, like, as I was getting away. Not sure how much of a victory that is. Taya is brutal, but fair. They would not persecute you on the grounds. You just have to make sure you don't end up running into them when we're not here, okay? Yeah. Just keep it low for a while, <laughs> again. Alright, is there anything else anyone wants to say? Or are we good with that being the end of session one? <laughs> that was crazy. 
Yeah. <laughs> this was literally oh. so fucking good. I loved everything. Oh, God. Oh, You're all God. amazing. Wowie zowie. Oh, Everyone's characters so are so funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I loved the Morgan Tante fist fight like immediately. So good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Before before we oh. continue, I, mean, I think I'm gonna close the recording. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Say bye, y'all. Bye. Bye, y'all. 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 Bye